Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Abelson from Kinetic Health. We're going to go over what we refer to as the superficial and deep arm lines. We're talking about fascial connections, connective tissue, how one area of the body actually connects to the next. Now, why this is so important is because when we're treating a condition, it could be a shoulder condition, it could be an elbow condition, we could be talking about a wrist condition, something like carpal tunnel syndrome. We want to show you how these different structures are interrelated, how a problem in one area can actually cause all the symptoms and a condition in another area. So, when we go through this, this work is based off of several people. Uh, Thomas Myers from Anatomy Trains, um, incredible work. The Stuccos from Italy. They all talk about fascial planes, areas of the body that can actually be dissected out. Areas where we, perhaps, for example, we have something in the shoulder here and it connects down farther into the bicep. These aren't separate entities. They are connected together with actual physical structures. And these are called fascia or connective tissue. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in and we're going to actually tape some areas along Leanne here, she's being a good sport. And we're going to go on some of the superficial and deep areas and then we're going to describe this and show you how these connections relate to particular conditions. Hi, Dr. Evangelos Milonasa, Kinetic Health. Now I'll be taping the deep front arm line. Okay, now Evangelos just put on the deep front line here, anterior front line. Now, what's important to note is when we look at this, we can look at the position of this, and we say, okay, we're coming up the pec minor into the biceps brachii here. So if we've got a problem with the biceps with the rotator cuff, we're, on this side, we're going to notice that any kind of a problem in this area may actually create other problems farther down the line. So if we start looking down here, and we say, okay, this is heading towards the outside of the elbow here. So if we have a problem with what we call lateral epicondylitis, so we have an issue on that side, anything in the shoulder on this side could affect that. So if we're going to treat that condition, we have to consider all the structures up that line. Same thing, if we start moving down towards the wrist here, we're starting to get towards the thumb here, or what we call the thenar. Now, the muscles in this area are quite often affected with several syndromes. Sometimes it could be carpal tunnel, which is more median nerve towards the center here, but there's an offshoot of a branch that comes off the median nerve that may actually affect the thumb. The radial nerve comes along here, and if, that, if we start having a problem with some of the structures along here, we'll get numbness, tingling, altered sensation, and that will affect thumb function. So anything along the entire pathway can affect it not only coming down, but back up again in that direction. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually tape the superficial front arm line. Now that we've taped the superficial front arm line, when we examine it, you can see how it comes off the pectoralis major, it comes down and follows the medial intramuscular septum, right into the, the medial epicondyle, which is a common uh, complaint that we see in the clinic. It's, it's otherwise known as golfer's elbow. So looking at this line, you can see how a restriction in the pec, or even along the inside of the arm, can affect this point. If we follow this down, it goes through the flexor group, right into the carpal tunnel, and then it fans out into the fingers. So any restrictions along this or into the hand can cause some tingling or numbness and, and can mimic carpal tunnel syndrome. What's important is looking above and below, you see how everything's interconnected and how structures in one area can affect structures in another, leading to a number of problems with rotator cuff issues, elbow issues, or wrist problems. Very interesting uh, fascial lines in the arm. Okay, now that we have the deep and superficial lines taped on Leanne's arm here, we're going to talk a little bit about the correlation between these lines and acupuncture. It's really interesting when we start looking at acupuncture, the fact that the meridians are actually lying on top of these fascial lines. For a very long time now in acupuncture, people wonder, well, how can I possibly, for example, go into this point right here, which is called pericardium 7 at the wrist, and use that for treating not only wrist pain, but chest pain. Well, if we look at these fascial lines, we'll see that they're full of neurological structures. And then we see that if we actually stimulate different points along this line, that it will actually be affecting areas far away. When you do acupuncture, you put a needle in, and you twist that needle, and that creates a torque on there. Now, if we look at the amount of torque on there, we say, well, how much could this possibly be? It's considerable. Some research at Harvard University has shown that 
by putting that on there and keeping a stretch on that needle, which you actually do when you twist it, you create an effect down the entire plane of fascia, a neurological plane, in addition to a fascial plane. So if we work something down here at the wrist, such as pericardium 7 here, we're actually affecting everything along the entire track. If we start looking at the other line here, the superficial line, we'll see a little pink dot up here, and I put that in the proximate point of lung 6. At that point, we not only use it for forearm pain, but we use that for treating conditions of the chest and treating it for asthma, a number of different things. So it starts to make sense that by stimulating points along these fascial planes, we're actually able to treat conditions far away from these points. It's another way of basically showing how one part of a kinetic chain affects farther parts of the kinetic chain, which may be from the shoulder right down to the hand or even in the elbow. Really interesting. Now we'll be taping the deep back arm line and the superficial back arm line. Now that we've got the um, deep back arm line taped here, you can see how it starts right off the spine here, through the rhomboids, into the rotator cuff, and then down through the triceps, the lateral epicondyle, which is the, uh, the spot where people come in with tennis elbow when they have tennis elbow injuries, through the ulna here to the collateral ligaments of the ulna, right into the thenar muscles on the side of the hand. So just looking at the relationship between these various uh, fascial connections, when we are, we're at the clinic, we have people coming in with rotator cuff problems. You can see how shoulder problems can be related to elbow, the uh, lateral epicondylitis. And once again, as we follow the ulnar nerve, which runs along the bone here, you can see how tingling or numbness in this area can be affected by a nerve entrapment within the fascia or as it leads into the muscles of the hand. Now that Brian's taped the superficial back arm line, you can see how it starts right up here in the suboccipital region coming down and it covers basically the entire trapezius, the upper, mid, and lower part, coming across into the deltoid. So this particular line can be involved more in a, in a deltoid type of problem, a strain or an imbalance, versus the other line, which is more of a rotator cuff issue. Following it down, it, it parallels the other line, but more superficially, once again, into the lateral epicondyle, which could be involved in uh, tennis elbow type complaints, and here into the extensor group, which comes down into the backside of the wrist, and this could be a problem more in terms of wrist extension, uh, problems with the ligaments, or any type of repetitive strain in this area. So you can see how these two lines parallel each other, but work at different levels, deep and superficial. And important, an important point about this line too is going back up into the suboccipital region. This can be involved in tension headaches and a lot of other uh, neck complaints. So very, very interesting lines and, and looking at the relationship of them as well. One thing I want to talk about with the posterior is also a correlation between meridians. In acupuncture, the meridians actually lie on top of fascial planes. Now, this is a very important point in terms of understanding kinetic chain relationships. We have a meridian that runs down the back here called the uh, triple energizer or Sanjo. Now, there's a point here, Sanjo 10, right here. And what's interesting about this is that in traditional Chinese medicine, this point is used not only to treat arm pain, but it's also used to treat shoulder pain and headaches that actually form. Now, of course, if we look at some of the fascial lines here, we soon see that we have fascial connections to the upper cervical area, suboccipital area, trapezius. But this point here has been very, very effective at treating suboccipital headaches. So we can see how stimulating a point somewhere along these fascial planes is obviously having a neurological effect. Very, very powerful information. It is really interesting to see how anatomical dissections actually start to highlight and we start to understand traditional Chinese medicine how certain effects could take place even though these points are so far 